leading up to this season here. We've got the stadium, it's looking good. We've brought in a lot of good quality players. Um, and then there's another change of manager, Simon. So what's your memories of Jimmy Anson coming in? I just said to the boy there, just walking across that training pitch in Holland with a shell suit on. It was a terrible shell suit. We all had it as well. But he chose to stick it on. It was the Celtic colours with a perm. And if I'm being honest, you're thinking, who is this guy? Apart from the first minute of training, there was no real, it was all with the ball. Everything was with the ball, everything had, everything was timed. Uh, and it was just, you could tell, it was, you know, you talk about the Dutch philosophy, you could just tell that he was, he was kind of steeped in that. And that was up my street, you know. I had the managers over the years that would just run you for the first two weeks. But everything was done with the ball. Mm -hmm. I was uh, listening to Jackie during the week there regarding the exact same yeah. period and he touched on the fact that sometimes um, <coughs> if you remove the emotional element away from the manager so he's coming in with a job to do he knows he knows he needs to win the league Rangers although a rival are just another opponent you think that was quite important to have that kind of influence I think it helped him I think it helped him uh, because he, he wasn't really he, well, he wasn't linked to the club you know so he's, he's got that kind of distance he's came in as you say focused to do a job and I think the way he went about it you know there was no whether it was taking somebody out of the team or bringing somebody in, it was just the job, there was no emotion. It didn't matter if it was you or Tom Boyd, it would take you out and put somebody else in if you felt it benefited the team. And there was a calmness about it as well, you know, even down to the bits after games, it would come in and again I've been in dressing rooms where boys would go for each other, the manager would be ranting and raving, you know, everything would be kicking off after the game, but with, with him it was just right, okay, if there's a problem today, we address it on Monday. And even then he would probably take the two or three guys that were concerned in that situation he would, he would address it with them, he wouldn't have everybody in. And I just thought, that worked. You know, I've been in the rooms where there's an inquest after the game on a Monday and people are having their say and it just becomes a rabble. Uh, it was just more controlled and calm with him. Mm -hmm. And in the summer there was a lot of changes, players coming in and those leaving. Um, some kind of star names and you had the Canio and, and Cadet. <coughs> but some of the um, long term players like Peter Grant and obviously McStay had now long retired before mm -hmm. then as well. Um, did you fear when we started bringing players in that we weren't going to challenge this uh, juggernaut Rangers side for the league title? I don't remember fearing anything. I just, you know, wanted to nail down the players that were coming. There was a lot of comings and goings, as you said. And it takes time sometimes to gel. I mean, we lost the first couple of games of the season, which, when you look back, you know, we were under a hell of a lot of pressure after those two games, you know, Easter Road and then Dunfermline at home. Uh, but as I say, there was a lot of comings and goings, big figures in the club. Uh, obviously, your man here was still there as captain, but we brought, we brought big characters in, you know. Burley was a big character coming into the club. Uh, all these guys came in and just, just seemed to gel. I think it was a Liverpool game in the UEFA Cup where we should have won that night and I think we kind of knew then I certainly thought you get a team here that can do something this year you know we've stood up toe to toe with a decent Liverpool team and I think that was the turning point for me anyway mm -hmm. and the, the game against Rangers where you mentioned uh, Craig Burley but also Paul Lambert scored that day how much uh, how important was Paul Lambert as an addition to that team the two of them sitting in the middle of the park were just brilliant I think Lambo's discipline <coughs> He came for Dortmund where he just, his game had kicked on, you know, the experience playing at Dortmund. He's came in, he's reading the game, his composure, being able to keep the ball. It, it enabled Butler to go that way. And I think Craig scored 15, 16 goals, important goals right throughout that season. But it was on the back of knowing that he had the discipline behind him of Lambert. I think the, the two of them were just perfect for each other. Took me well, we said, Lynn, though, I think the first couple of games, I think he was wrong. He says that himself, you know. Yeah. He, so he, think he was kicking it too late, I, he came in sort of later into the campaign kind of thing. Um, but I, I, I you'll see that's the thing, he thought he was playing with two left feet kind of thing, the way he was, you know, can you find a pass and can you him? But uh, you knew it would come, you know, just a wee process of settled down. You just said a European Cup one had been this year in Dortmund, so um, you knew the quality you were getting in terms of the player. And it's, it's the same as quite rightly says, in terms of the tactics, um, I think it allowed capability to play and what has favoured position was um, as much as you would always want to tell Craig Brown that that was his position, attack my field or rather than it as a wing back and another back. Yep. Um, he's always played as a wing back in Scotland but uh, you know, for a guy who played in that position and, and influenced quite a lot of the games I think Craig was certainly uh, and you know, it was his forte to play in the, the attack room. Mm -hmm. 
it's probably the season of his life actually when you look through his career yeah. probably the best season I mean um, <coughs> we'll all be talking a lot more yeah. in detail regarding the season itself yeah. but it's fitting that the first date on the Smell of the Golf Tour will be in Dunfermline because um, a week before we clinched the title obviously we went to East End there was a wee hiccup there what's your memories of that day Tom? Uh, memories of that day was uh, coming out at the end of the game and one of the supporters turning in there uh, boy, do you bet if we win it next week? <laughs> and that was my dad. <laughs> um, yeah, we knew the importance, we were disappointed. Um, uh, but as I say, it's, uh, yeah, it worked for us um, that we won it at Celtic Park at Paradise. It was only 15,000 at, at, uh, at Dunfermline, and so the better to win it at your own place. Uh, we were calm, mm -hmm. there was no problem. We knew we were going to do it. Well, going into that last game, um, obviously we haven't won the league since the centenary season. Yeah. Uh, could you take us behind the door of that changing room, then, Tom? Looking at the def kind of defensive players first and foremost, tell us what they brought to the to the uh, team to the yeah. training ground, and starting off with Jonathan Gould. Jonathan Gould. Uh, Jonathan was very steady. Uh, nothing spectacular, though. Uh, as Simon's mentioned about the games, changing moments. Uh, I thought there was a season changing moment within. Uh, the St Johnson game, all the way back, uh, the save is saved from George O'Boyle. Uh, yeah. uh, it was stunning, it was point blank save. Uh, and it was nil nil at the time. <coughs> this was in the, the league game, I think. Yep. We'd, you'd scored, was it league? I'd scored you scored in the Wednesday penalty. penalty. And and then then league 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 so Jacko scored uh, and Henrik. Right. So this was the, the league game, the third league game. We'd lost for previous two. I think had we went down to 1 0 and lost, uh, getting behind, I think we might have struggled to come back. Mm. Uh, and I think it was in the second half and it was an absolute stunning save, reflect. So uh, that was certainly um, a key moment, a pivotal moment. Uh, but Gildo was, was a character, an absolute character. Uh, I liked his uh, little bit of activities and having a wee uh, moments off the park, shall we say. But, it, was uh, always, it was always the brunt of the jokes, but he took uh, it and he, he, he liked it. He liked uh, to be the brunt of the jokes. He'd take a lot of stick off guys like online uh, stuff uh, in the uh, dressing room. Uh, and on the training pitch, but he, he took it in good spirit. He, he liked to be the kind of the clown of the mm -hmm. dressing room, mm -hmm. that way. And the, like but an intelligent boy, uh, you know, he's a very intelligent boy. But just, yeah. uh, I was just probably his character that uh, he would want to be part of that kind of thing. You know, is that a difficulty at being a professional footballer? If you, if you were unable to take that kind of ribbon, would you find it quite difficult in that dressing room? I think dressing rooms. Uh, most dressing rooms, yeah. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know now if they've changed and become more professional. Um, a far more professional. Um, uh, but listen, as you say, you're going to be your mates. That's that's you, you try to create that kind of team spirit uh, that it's your mates. So you can go out and have a wee bit of banter. There's some I don't think we take it to. I think Stefan wasn't the, the best, you know, in terms of even going off. But you know, a lot of times. But um, yeah, certainly it was. Uh, you try and create that team that kind of and in terms of that team spirit, mm -hmm. uh, and and part and parcel that is, is having a wee laugh at yourself and having a wee joke, and, uh, and there was certainly uh, quite a few of the bottom men in joke then. Now Stephen, the boy you mentioned, he was injured. He was injured for yeah. game. Yeah. Um, and Rico and Oni played number three. Rico, uh, the man with the, the, the different coloured boots, uh, one white, one green, I believe, um, a cult figure. I think it uh, it's Celtic Park. I think for that very reason, um, came in. What Rico and brought to the team uh, was he was the ability to defend. Uh, he was a defender coming from Italian football, um, and that was a, you know he, he, he could man mark as he done. I think mean, Brian Woodruff on a few occasions, um, and that was that was his role. He certainly somebody who could do that kind of role. And Vim defensively would he he'd Stubbs and Rico would pick up. Generally, the bigger boys and, and me and Rico or whoever we doing a bit, we'd, we'd mix and match to see who uh, we're playing with. You know, maybe Stefan's your left back, was saying there. Jackie sometimes played at right back, you know, quite a few times actually. Uh, so he would, he would work it accordingly, um, but uh, certainly Sunday we knew if there was somebody needed marking, uh, just hand that role to, to Rico. You mentioned the two centre halves, what a yeah. partnership that was, Tom. Aye, two centre halves, different types of players, you know. Uh, Rick, I think, uh, Simon said, the most determined boy you ever want to meet. I remember getting into the gym, he was right, how many press ups you did? I'll do a hundred more. And he would. How many sit ups you did? I'll do that, I'll, I'll beat you. And I suppose it was just as a wee target that he'd done. Um, 
Yeah, it was a good laugh. A very, a very confident fellow, shall we say. Yeah. Not, shy. not a shy boy. Uh, just coming straight out, you know, on his first days, and, and, and as though he'd been in there since day one, and uh, you know, really settled in. So, but he was a good lad, uh, and uh, but somebody who was very confident with his ability, and, and, and certainly helped. Uh, he'll never stop talking about the first goal in the League Cup final. Um, I still get that, yeah. and and we keep saying about that. Uh, he's, he's done nothing until we come in. Yeah. It was a former thing you're talking about him last. And, yeah. and plus, what did he win before that? I think Darren says that as well, didn't he? Aye, which we struggle to argue with. Ah, there's, there's no comeback exactly. to it, you know what I mean? Jack usually says that. What did you do before that? Uh, they joined in with that. Mm -hmm. And as a captain, Simon, um, what can you remember of Tom Boyd in that dressing room? Just a leader, you know, I think we'd, we'd, we'd lost uh, big guys that I'd kind of looked up to and Peter Le Grant, Paul McStay coming into the, the club, looking after me when I broke into the first team, uh, like this guy, and, and he took the role on brilliantly, you know, I think just organising little things, you know, like uh, the social event, you know, making sure all the boys were together, whether it was a golf day or whatever, making sure that we welcomed in the, the foreign guys, you know, and they felt part of it. You know, just everything about it, you know, a captaincy, for me, is more than just the, the, the football side of it. It's making sure that dressing room is focused and we're all moving in the right direction, and, and that's what he brought to it. I've mentioned during the week that it was one of the teams you look at and you knew there was a team spirit, and um, was a big part of that, getting the extracurricular activities well, organised and getting out for a drink and stuff like that. I think that's where you get to know people. I think, uh, I know nowadays in sport, it's... It's frowned upon, it's it's upon it. I mean, I felt, you know, if I could go out and have a beer or, or, or a game of golf or a, a bite to eat with somebody and got to know them, you'd go the extra yard for them in the pitch. You know, it, it became your mates, as you said. Well, but certainly with that, and I think where it becomes is that when you do have a few things, yeah, sometimes the truths are told about people, and you can, but you can get it not mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and I think that was the case, and, and, and a few beers with your mates is something that, that really relaxes you as well. Uh, and I think that was something that we tried to do. Uh, I think we took a leaf out of it. I think Rangers had that kind of, they say they kind of, the team spirit. They were the winners at the time. So you try and emulate what they were doing. So we, we, we put up to that. And for us, I, I think it certainly worked. Uh, I think I've got a few of us because we had quite a few foreigners. We tried to invite them all. Not a lot of them liked to golf. Mm -hmm. So well, what, what we've done with that is why we had a meal later on at night, mm -hmm. you know, try to do different activities, we tried paintballing uh, as well, and, you know, different things that we'd all try and, so it's not just about golf, there was only a select number of players that played golf, so we tried to do different things, uh, but also we finish with a meal at night. Yeah, you definitely get to, uh, you get to see the other side of people, you know, just rather than the work, you know, the training and, and clearing off home. Uh, well, it gives them something to do as well, something to think about, because mm -hmm. obviously foreigners come here, they might, you know, befriend too many people. So if you can stop coming, you can have a few drinks with your mate, that's going to have a go. So, yeah. um, as you say, we had a good one in the, in the lead up to the, uh, the, the last game of the season. Was that when you were sent home for training? Um, no, that was... Stubbs was talking about that a couple of weeks back, where uh, it was a bit worse for real when you went for training, so when the answer just sent everybody home. That must have been a day I was injured. <laughs> I, I was alright, I didn't need to drink. I, was, I just made sure everybody was alright. What are you laughing for? <laughs> I just made sure everybody was alright, I was in the water. So. And Jackie McNamara, a player who your two careers have, have kind of um, joined through management with Partick Thistle and London United. Yeah. Um, so, what's your, your thoughts on Jackie? He was a, a very forward thinking player, wasn't he? Aye, aye. And th 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 when he came in in 95, 96, Tommy Burns had seen something in me as a, as a striker, you know, I wasn't the biggest and rather than putting me up there as the focal point, he kind of wanted to shift me back deep on the pitch and link from the back, you know, in midfield and for whatever reason he put me on the right and he seen Jack is behind me and I mean people say was it telepathic but you, you know when you play with players you just you get comfortable with each other. Just players. You knew it, even if I was playing things blind, I knew he'd be there and I think it was vice versa and, it was actually a joy that first couple of seasons to play there. Uh, but yeah, and in terms I think it was a competition to see who was the youngest of the two. <laughs> looking, youngest <laughs> looking of the two. I might have just stuck no age to do it. See, they never did any worries. They weren't the captain. You know, no worries, no stress. No, they just went out to enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. But I think he's got a determination, Jackie, and, and oh, a football intelligence where he starts at right back. 
he keeps telling me he was a midfielder, but he, he, he grew into that. He played midfield, you know, and, and he spoke in that interview the other night. But I, I remember I'd moved on, and Martin O'Neill came in, and he changed the shape, and he brought a gat in. And every time Jackie played, he never let anybody down. He was man of the match at times, and he left out again. I was thinking, why is it? Why they no playing? But he never gave in, and he won Martin O'Neill over, and he became Celtic captain on the back of that, you know, and it just showed. How good a footballer is because he can he could play anywhere in the park. Maybe I'd argue up front because he never scored a lot of goals, but certainly the intelligence to play midfield. He could read things at the back. He played centre back. You know, just a, a good all-round football player. Mm -hmm. I think as you say, you get that. You will get me captains as well. But I think you've got to have respect for the rest of the teammates. Yeah, I mean, think certainly Jackie has earned that. And done that. And I think he did it in the years. You know? He did it by leading by example because yeah. he wasn't a he wasn't a shout after. Yeah. He's quite a calm guy. He would never come in and rant and rave and. So he just did everything by example we expected you to follow and I think that was not to imagine as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you, down the years Celtic have, have had uh, iconic number sevens, you know, from Jim Kay through ah. Dag Leash and we had another one in Henrik Larson. And I think people, Celtic fans, uh, are always wondering what kind of uh, a professional was Henrik. He must have been like a superhuman uh, player because that's what he became. So what was he like behind the scenes? Henrik came in and I knew him. Purely from watching the 94 World Cup, I think Sweden got to the 34th and he had this hair and I think he scored. So I, I immediately knew who he was. Uh, I think he was a bit standoffish when he came in. He did, oh, I think uh, he kind of carried it. He kept his self himself. But as you said, the well, that, that, that's, that, that's in his professional life. He, he, or his, his, he kept that even in his house and stuff like that. You yeah. know, when you wait, people come to his door and all that and everything. It means so much so that I, you know, I remember when he was, I'd left actually when he died and he came in and he got a Ferrari. Um, and I noticed and uh, asked for him to be shot in that and I wasn't allowed at the estate, which is only about 100 yards out. So you can't get in a wee shot in that. Well, I didn't like him for that. But, but he's, he's somebody who was, um, you would class as a, you know, a perfect professional about how he kept his lifestyle. So, the modern, you know, it's in the modern kind of game. Um, because you wouldn't hear anything bad about Henry happening, you know, and somebody would have stories happening about him years ago. Uh, he made sure that he, he was somebody who he looked after his, self, his body, his physique. Phenomenal. Um, uh, his, his ability as a player, um, I think maybe that helped him, obviously. Um, so, yeah, he was somebody who just really, really uh, took to the, the football club. And he had a decent first season, of course, but was that a surprise to you then, or did you expect him to go on to achieve what he went on to achieve? No, I can't have first pass, no. <laughs> no chance. Yeah, to I, to I, remember, I remember watching him in training, yeah. and top notch, but I just felt he was getting better and better and better. Yeah, and I think it. even when I left in 99, he's, he's kicked on again, he's going 40, 50 goals a season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he was one of these guys, the quality was there from day one, but I don't know if it was the club was a perfect fit for him, or his confidence was coming back, or I think he was just getting better and better. Uh, and you know, it was until the point where he was, you know, the guy of the last three or four seasons when he was 40 goals a season. Uh, 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 so uh, yeah. uh, he, he did improve after that game. Yeah. Uh, that had to. Uh, he, he, he hates being reminded about that. And what will remind him is, is a wee bit of banter. You might be a first man. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he repaid that many times over. Uh, mm -hmm. Many, many times over. Now you and Simon come through some hard times at Celtic, but that days in the early 90s, what kind of a boy was Simon by the time the the uh, smell of the glove season came yeah, around? Well, the smell of the glove season, I, I think the, the impact that, that, that Simon had, you just look at the amount of games that he played uh, through that season, uh, it was phenomenal. I just wish, uh, I would have loved it for, for it to be Simon to score the winning goal, uh, to stop, but as you say, somebody who's been through the ranks and coming through the ranks. Uh, it would have been nice uh, to be able to see him uh, get that goal, that winner. But what was his name again, Simon? Do you know it? Can you remember his name? I've been reminded over the years. Falcon Bridge. Falcon Bridge. Listen, what, what, what he brought to the team, uh, you see, that season with, with, with Jagger, a few seasons ahead of him, he's an intelligent football player, an intelligent guy. Uh, and that's what you need to play in those advanced days. Uh, and nothing ever phased him. Uh, you know, going up and taking a penalty against Liverpool and banging it at the back of the net. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was something else. Really, 
No, well, I think you must hit that one, or so he tells me. I had to, no, what I told you was I had to put it in there because David James is so He's a big boy, wasn't he? He was a big boy. Uh, actually, it was like that one, it was in the bar. It was a belt in it. Aye, man, Jackie scored the other one. Yeah, had to go up with it though. Uh, number 11 that day was the late Phil O'Donnell and yeah. obviously on the night of these events there'll be, there'll be tributes paid to Phil. Um, as a person and as a player, what's your memories of Phil O'Donnell? As, as a player, fantastic. You know, I remember watching him when I was still at school, Phil was two or three years older than me and he was at Motherwell at the time and then when he signed in 94, I was excited because this guy was the new kid in the block and he was coming to play with us at Celtic and I think he scored two in his debut for him. As a player, just great modern box to box, you know, just uh, intelligent with it, but energy to run all day. Hence, he called Forrest and Charlie Nicholas kissing Forrest Gump. As a guy, incredible, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to meet some really good people over my career, uh, one of my best pals, and just one of the nicest guys. I don't think, you're talking about Henry, I don't think anybody in the game, whether it was Celtic Rangers or anybody else, would have a bad word to say about Phil because just what you've seen is what you got with him, you know, a, a real down-to-earth family guy, you know, that was the most important thing in his life. The football came second, uh, and just an all-round good guy. Tom, what would you add to that? that just so sad that he's been taken away so early. Um, as you say, from people who knew him, um, and uh, everybody who did know him, uh, was touched by you know, the, genuine, uh, the genuineness of, of his character. Uh, and uh, when you do it in a football field, it would you know, probably give you 100% in every game, um, nothing less. Uh, and uh, it's certainly somebody who, as you say, quite greatly, uh, he had a lot of time for his family. Uh, and, but more so, uh, I don't think he ever fell out there, do you? No. Never a bad boy. Never a cross mm -hmm. the, the perfect professional, as you say, to, and I say that about Henry, but in terms of how Phil lived his life, and, and they welcome him to him, they, me lower and stuff like that, you know. Uh, and you could maybe a wee bit of and didn't want to concentrate on it. Everything was focused on and stuff, you know, uh, on, on playing the playing side of it. But as a man, it's always simple that. Now the guy that came on and replaced you that night, uh, scored a goal and all <laughs> going down in history and but I mean Harold Bratback came with a good pedigree. Um I think he mm -hmm. was a pilot, was he not? Was yeah. he a pilot? But, well, he was a pilot, he became a pilot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember, I do remember <coughs> when we were playing uh, Baraga or uh, Jim Rummy or whatever up the back of the, the bus, Harold was in the front leading about uh, pressure cabin at 30,000 <laughs> feet. Uh, and I says, how exactly does that count when you when you get a prowl in your hand? You know that, but it doesn't. He was somebody who, uh, he was a very intelligent man, obviously. Um, much maligned, uh, scored quite a few goals, missed quite a few as well. Uh, I've just seen Alfred Morales miss. Yeah. Uh, don't think you've ever got quite to that stage, I think. I don't know if you've ever missed someone like that. Was it one? Was it not done for him? I think there was one, I think there was one. In the nature of the focus on it, as you say, he scored some crucial, well, obviously not the crucial goal, but he scored a lot of goals that season yeah. when he came in. It came in at Christmas <coughs> and I'd enjoyed a spell up front with, with Hednick which was perfect for me, you know, just an intelligent footballer and bringing my game on and just a joy to play with up there. And then all of a sudden Harold's came in and I think I got shifted to the right for a spell because Jackie was out with his knee. But he's popped up with goals for us. Uh, another one who came in and I think probably would have had his eyes open on a, a night out. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, aye. But want it, want to the boys. Great character, great to see him over the years at charity things. He's always coming back, you know, just a full enthusiasm when he can. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. But just and a nice, nice. When he grabbed the club, the club got it, gets to him. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all, like, any player I think's come here, certainly it's a fondness. So, uh, as well, you know, Harry was much maligned in terms of, you know, he scored quite a few goals, but I think you know, the supporters. Sometimes are quite critical, uh, and we see the ones that he misses are the ones that he scored. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, but he was Sunday. He was a, he was a great boy as well. Uh, good character. Well, Tom and Simon, you'll be appearing at the <coughs> Alhambra in Dunfermline uh, on the 19th of May at Scottish Cup final night. Hopefully, we'll be celebrating, and also at Greenock Town Hall on the 2nd of June. 
uh, for the Smell the Love Tour. Hopefully we'll see a few other faces, we'll invite some of the other boys along uh, for these events. One final question, Smell the Golf, Tom, where did it come from? Oh, where did it come from? Do you, know, do you know why you said that to me? Do you know I, I don't know. <laughs> we're going to it just as the answers are. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I don't exactly, know, so I can't tell want. you until the night because I'll meet kill you before that. <laughs> <laughs> Simon? Will we find out on the night? You just can find out the night, yeah, we'll, we'll reveal all. Uh, it's been one of those ones that's been asked many, many a time over the years. The hysteria around it at the time, I with the t-shirts on, on the day. You could have been millionaires, I if they'd have got that new t-shirts out there, wouldn't they? Mugs and mugs, <laughs> apart from the couple of mugs that are here. <laughs> so the Smell the Golf Tour, you can buy your tickets directly from the penalty spot, uh, or online from theceliticstar.com. But thank you very much, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you. It's a wrap.